So, who here has heard of AI? And I don't just mean the kind that does your homework for you. As I'm sure we've all seen, the use of AI is now everywhere. It's the invisible hand filtering your spam emails and figuring out exactly which meme is gonna keep you scrolling. But how do we get to this point? And what can we learn from AI? Today, we're gonna to talk about the interesting story of where AI came from. Because it wasn't that long ago that the development of AI to solve real world problems was considered impossible. But as you'll hear from this story, what is considered impossible today can be made possible tomorrow. So don't be afraid to dream big and follow those dreams. Today, we'll also go behind the scenes to learn a little bit more about how AI works. Because only by understanding how it works can we dispel some fears. Like the fact that it isn't some kind of mythical creature trying to take over the world. It's just a technology that learns patterns from vast amounts of data and then uses those patterns to make predictions. So let's get started with how do these things work? And we'll use an example that we're all familiar with. Like when I say AI, what's the first thing that comes to your mind? I bet it's a language model. You know, the kind where you ask it a question and it does your coursework for you? The first time you use these things, it feels like magic, right? These language models have become so good because they've been trained on terabytes of data. Some train on data sets estimated to be 160 times bigger than Wikipedia. That's a lot of data. Now, another reason why they're so good is because they use transformers to generate sentences. Now, transformers, unlike the movie, are neural networks that transform one sequence into another, like using the first half of your sentence to predict the second half. Now, transformers are really good at understanding sentences because they have something called an attention mechanism. Now, what's that, you might wonder? Attention models human attention. It allows the AI to figure out which parts of the sentence are most important in your question and focus on those when generating a response. Through attention, it slowly figures out how sentences are pieced together, and by training it on millions of different sentences, it builds a probability model of which words typically follow others. So the next time you ask it a question, it will then use this probability model to predict the most likely next word and then generate a response one piece at a time. Now, while these language models have become really good in recent years, it's important to remember they're not sentient, nor do they understand what they're saying. So before you start catching feelings with your language model, just remember it's generating a response purely based on the statistical patterns that it's learned. It's just that for the very first time, we're witnessing a technology which is able to replicate human language, which to the machine is just a statistical distribution, but to us represents the essence of our intelligence. But how did we get to this point? It seems like it was just yesterday that AI exploded onto the scene. A lot of people consider AI to be an overnight success. But what if I told you it's been 70 years in the making? 70 years. Just think about that. Does 70 years sound like an overnight success to you? Because just like in life, people just like to talk about the good times, the breakthroughs, the successes. But people don't like to talk about the setbacks, the hard times, the times where we almost wanted to give up. It took 70 years to grow a small idea into the AI we see now. So in today's talk, I'm gonna take you on a journey through the story of AI, because it's a story to inspire the dreamers out there. There's a lot we can learn. Starting with lesson number one, success takes time. You wouldn't believe it if I said people have been working on AI since the 1950s, trying to replicate it based on how our own brains worked. Because during this time, neuroscientists were making big discoveries into our own minds. They figured out that everything we see, hear, and feel is from activities of neurons, lighting up like a fireworks display in our own brains. These neurons have millions of connections with other neurons. And every time you learn something new, connections are strengthened and new ones are formed. 
Equally, when we forget something, old ones are weakened. And thus, AI was born out of a crazy idea. If our brain was basically a massive network of neurons, could we replicate this to teach machines how to learn? And not just learn, could we replicate human intelligence? And this was a really exciting idea back then, but there was just one small problem. The technology during this time was way too early. You gotta remember, even by the 1980s, the most advanced computer was about the size of a printer and about 200 times slower than the phone you have in your pocket. Storage was also a problem. The most advanced storage devices were only about a gigabyte, but they're about the size of a fridge and they weigh 250 kilos. So unsurprisingly, this led to a lot of problems during the development of AI, and it faced setback after setback after setback. And this leads us into lesson number two. The path to success is usually never straight, but that's life sometimes. And that's the more interesting but lesser known story of AI. It wasn't some kind of overnight success. Because of the problems in computation, it faced not one, but two winters where everyone almost gave up. It wasn't all bad though. Periods of winter also followed periods of summer where researchers were able to build simple models to do things like pay checkers, demonstrating for the very first time how machines could learn by themselves. But these early models just could never live up to expectations. Where our own brains have an estimated 86 billion neurons, these early networks can only replicate a tiny fraction of this. So as quickly as AI rose to fame, they plunged to the shadows. And during the 70s and late 80s, People started to give up on this dream. Researchers came out saying, this is never gonna work. And for a really long time, the development of AI to solve real world problems was considered impossible, until it wasn't. So we have to remember, just as the famous explorer Ernest Shackleton said, by endurance we conquer. Just think about that for a moment, because how many of us have wanted to give up on our dreams at the first sign of trouble? Well, I'm here to remind you today not to give up on your dreams. Because thanks to the dreamers out there, this isn't the end of our story. As time went on, we entered into the internet age. And with it, unlocked a brand new way to access and share data. Along with more and more powerful computers that finally gave researchers the resources they desperately needed to build bigger and better models. And from there, it was only up. We went from the simple AI that played checkers to the world we live in now. And that leads us into the last lesson. Follow your dreams and dream big. Because it's the dreamers out there that make it happen. Taking us from those simple AI to the now self-driving cars and this cancer treatment AI, the world of opportunity has just opened. And the advancement of AI has allowed us to build world-changing technologies that were previously unimaginable. So as we close this talk today, I hope to leave you with just one clear message. Dream big. Even if that means you have to start from square one, have the courage to forge your own path and follow your dreams. It took 70 years to develop AI as we see it today. So don't see setbacks as a failure point. Remember, it's how we see them and respond to them. See every failure as an opportunity to improve. Also remember, while the advancements in AI are big, the essence of human intelligence remains unique. We will always need people. We will always need you. Because human intelligence goes beyond algorithms. It goes beyond computations. What we do best is take what we know and apply it to new unsolved problems. Problems that don't have solutions. Problems that can't be searched on the internet. This is where human creativity will always be needed. So don't see AI as a threat to human relevance, but an opportunity for human advancement. AI introduces technologies that were previously thought impossible, but it will make what seems impossible today a reality tomorrow. Thank you for your time.